A canvas back, or a can, is one of our most prized species of waterfowl. The male canvas back has been called the king of ducks because of its striking coloration and large size. Through the years, they have also gained the reputation as one of the most delicious table ducks. The purpose of this video is to help waterfowl hunters learn to identify canvas backs. In the program, we'll look at cans on the water and in flight and show how they differ from other species of ducks that are often confused with canvas backs. At rest, the canvas back has a unique profile. It has a wedge-shaped head sloping downward from the forehead to the tip of a black bill. Like all diving ducks, canvas backs ride low in the water. The male canvas back's white back, belly, and wings, and its chestnut red head are visible from a considerable distance and should be easy to spot. Because the neck on canvas backs is larger and thicker than that of other ducks, Male cans have been nicknamed bulls. Look for the long bull neck of the can in flight. You can see that the neck appears to be almost as thick as the head. Also, look for what appears to be a long, dark tail. The actual tail is short, but appears much longer because the black feet extend beyond the end of the tail. When seen from below, the general characteristic of a large bird with a white belly bordered by a black chest and long black tail separates the male canvas back from most other ducks. In October and November, colors of plumage in male canvas backs can vary greatly. Most adult males will have molted into their nuptial or breeding plumage by late October. The white back, belly, and underwings found on these birds make them one of the whitest ducks on the wing. The plumage of young males, on the other hand, can vary from an almost hen-like brown to that of the adult male. Female canvas backs, regardless of age, have a buffy brown head and neck, shading into a darker brown chest and back. Their sides are a dusky gray. The female can also has a long, thick neck. Canvas backs have a powerful direct flight without the dipping and weaving displayed by some of the other diving duck species, such as scop or ring neck ducks. Compared to these two gadwall, the canvas back in the rear has a more rapid wing beat, as is the case with all the diving ducks. Remember to look for the sloping profile of the head and bill and the elongated bull neck. Also, look for the canvas back's feet extending beyond the short tail in flight, giving the appearance of a much longer gray or black tail. This is true regardless of the age or sex of the bird. Canvas back flock size and maneuvers while in the air are quite variable. During long flights between navigation pools or during migration, the birds often fly in wedge or V-shaped formations at high altitudes. Flock size may be large, numbering up to several hundred birds. Flocks undergoing this type of movement are often seen in early morning or after sunset. Movement of canvas backs for short distances is different from the longer flights. During short flights, cans may fly alone or in small groups to reach feeding or resting areas along the river. These flights can occur at any time of the day. Also, it's common to see canvas backs flying with other species when moving between feeding and resting areas. When wild celery is in short supply, these flights may take cans into backwater marshes where food still remains. Canvas backs also have a tendency to come to decoys readily, even on days when other ducks shy away. Single canvas backs or small groups may move between areas using the same flight lanes each day with little variation in altitude. They often fly at altitudes under 100 yards during these flights. It's during these low-level flights that waterfowl hunters make most mistakes in identification.
Canvas backs in flight can be confused with redheads, mallards, scop, ring neck ducks, and others. To compound matters, canvas backs may be seen mixed with other species, such as these redheads during low level flights. There are a number of ways you can distinguish one duck species from another. Among them are differences in size, shape, plumage patterns and colors, wing beat, and flocking behavior. For example, the redhead, except for being somewhat smaller than the canvas back, is very similar in overall appearance. Luckily, the redhead is not found in large numbers along the Mississippi River or problems with identification would be increased. Let's look at the differences between redheads and canvasbacks. First, their size. The redhead is slightly smaller. Next, head shape. The rounded forehead of the redhead versus the long, sloping forehead of the canvasback. Finally, size of neck. The much shorter, thinner neck of the redhead contrasts sharply with the can's long bull neck. The mallard is perhaps the duck most often confused with the canvas back along the river. Good ways to separate the two species in flight are wing beat. Mallards have a slower, deeper wing beat compared to the more rapid, shallow wing beat of the canvas back. And tail color. When seen from underneath, Mallards have a white tipped tail, while the tail of a can appears gray or black. Remember, because of the can's short tail, their feet extend beyond the tail and give the appearance of a much longer tail. Also, wing color. The speculum, or colored wing patch, on a mallard is a dark iridescent blue, bordered by two distinct bands of white. Cans do not have any bright wing coloration. Ring necked ducks and scob, or bluebills, are two common diving duck species found along the river. One way to distinguish these two species from canvas backs is size. Ring necks and scob are medium sized ducks. In comparison, canvas backs are large. Ring necks, scob, and canvas backs can often be found flying together but they have different styles of flight. Scop and ringnecks are swift, often erratic flyers, compared to the more direct flying can. Another feature that separates canvas backs from other species in flight is the amount and location of white on the wing and the back. Although canvas back males have a solid white appearance, the females lack the white markings. Several other species show varying amounts of white on the wings, such as lesser scop, bufflehead, gadwall, and widgeon.